Hi and welcome to my first video on music health and well-being. So on a regular basis I'm going to be posting um, different videos around different topics on music health and well-being. I'll often be focusing on dementia care because this is where my own expertise and research lies but I'll um, also be um, taking these key concepts and um, showing the ways that we can be um, embedding music into our own daily lives to support good mental health and mental well-being. Before I start, I'd like to, um, to introduce myself a little bit more to kind of give you a, a flavour for what these videos will be like. Um, I, I want them to be, um, you know, informal, relaxed, my aim is to eventually turn them into live videos so that you can be joining in with the discussion, be putting questions and I can be answering them in, in real time too. Um, you know, my, my aim is that you'll be able to grab a coffee, <laughs> a cup of tea and, and sit down and learn a little bit more about music health and wellbeing, taking some time out of your day to be focusing on your, your own self-care, your own wellbeing too, looking at how we can do this through the lens of music which for me is really exciting and it's my passion. So I'm really excited to be sharing this with you um, and hope you'll be, you'll be joining me um, on a regular basis with these videos. So um, a bit more background about me. I'm Rosie Mead. I'm the founder and director of a not-for-profit not organisation called Musica Music and Wellbeing. And we are a social enterprise which supports the dementia journey through music. So we work um, around the UK at the moment, delivering music workshops and performances in care settings. Um, we predominantly work in care home environments, but we do also work in hospitals and day centres and community settings too. We have a variety of musicians that currently work with us around the UK. And we also deliver um, training programmes, um, primarily online, especially at the moment, um, training and coaching with myself, um, where we support carers, whether that's family carers or care practitioners, to be embedding music into the daily, um, daily lives of um, their, the residents um, living with dementia that they care for and into their daily um, dementia care. <laughs> um, so so I, I set up Musica um, out of a, a real passion for um, supporting people living with dementia and their carers through music. And this was really born out of um, academic interest. Um, and both of them, for me, have kind of gone um, hand in hand. So I set up Musica when I was in the final year of my music degree. Um, I played clarinet. And at the time, I was volunteering at a local hospital, playing um, the clarinet uh, for patients, uh, mainly um, elderly patients. So um, I worked on elderly care wards. And they obviously um, predominantly... Uh, I'm trying to think of the right word. Um, obviously need more caffeine today. <laughs> they had a higher number of patients living with dementia than at any other um, wards within the hospital. And so um, by playing my clarinet on the wards, by singing with patients, um, I very quickly um, understood that there was um, there were real benefits to using live music on the wards and that, you know, using music wasn't just a nice thing to have, that actually this seemed to be... Um, quite an important part of the overall holistic care of patients living with dementia. So I wanted to explore this further. I, I love learning and I think that's something that's really important for all of us is kind of, um, you know, never stop learning. Let's learn from one another, which is why um, I want these videos to open up a, a dialogue between us so we can all be sharing our own knowledge and experience around the ways that we've seen um, music supporting dementia care or the research and understanding that you already have, because I think it's really good for us to be sharing that and getting the conversation going. Um, so I try to think um, where I was going <laughs> from that uh, was all around um, the, the kind of the academic side. So I wanted to learn more. And so I, in my final year at university, I um, conducted, a, I wrote a dissertation around the, um, the use of music in everyday lives of older adults. So um, as I kind of got, um, got stuck into that dissertation, I started to hone more in on, on dementia care and the benefits that music could bring um, for this demographic. I then continued um, my academic studies alongside 
um, developing and growing Musica as well. And, and like I said, the two have always combined. So I went on to um, complete a master's in music psychology, where again, I, um, I then conducted a more in-depth study. Um, so this had to go through full um, NHS ethics. And, and that was a really, um, really useful thing to go through, although it's very gruelling for, for those of you researchers that have been through this process. Um, I will make a video um, on, on my thoughts of the process and, and why I think actually it's for um, researchers, it's, it's a really important process to go through before you then start conducting your research. But that's for another video. So my master's um, study was looking at the effects of live music in an acute hospital ward for patients living with dementia in terms of agitation, well-being, anxiety. It was mainly quantitative based, um, lots of um, measurement scales, um, but I found that it was the, the qualitative um, stuff that really kind of helped me to delve deeper into this topic. So the observations and interviews that I conducted um, gave me really rich data. And so I wanted to take that a bit further. So I then um, started a PhD in um, music sociology um, started seven years ago, <laughs> so I'm getting close to the end now. I, I'm just writing up my um, my whole thesis right now, um, and it's really exciting. I can't wait to to share um, share the whole thing um, with you. But I'm going to be sharing different elements um, in these videos. And my PhD research um, is an ethnographic study in um, two hospital wards where I spent five months. Um, in the hospital looking at the relationship between live music and agitation in patients living with dementia so i looked at it in terms of um the ward as a whole so the environment within the ward how music played a role within this um, how the environment changed before during and after the music but then really digging deep into agitation what causes agitation how music could support um, a reduction in agitation and actually looking at agitation at an individual level because often I think it's seen as a um, a, a blanket you know, in terms of measurements um, there kind of there are you know set things that you have to um, to tick in order to be um, classed as, as agitated um, and excuse me if I'm kind of making if I'm making my own blanket um, assumptions and terms on this too um, but what I really wanted to look at was that that individual um, side of agitation and I'll, I'll be posting a video around agitation and my own kind of experience and understanding about it um, so that's in a very brief nutshell, me, my background, musica, my PhD. Um, and so just kind of giving you a bit more about um, you know, my, my credentials to talk on, on this topic and my own experiences. But today I wanted to delve into um, the concept of musical connectedness, which for me was a really big theme that came out of my research. So musical connectedness is threefold. And first of all, I refer to it as musical connectedness, but um, other people also call it musical togetherness. So if you're interested in the research behind this, it'll be really useful to, to look up those terms to delve deeper into this topic. So the first point of musical connectedness is um, I was looking at the ways that music can help to afford connections in terms of connecting with the environment. So often um, when um, a patient with dementia is admitted to um, a hospital ward, there's this sense of disconnect. And actually, I think for all of us, um, we can we can understand that, too. Um, it's unfamiliar setting, unfamiliar faces. Um, you're, there's kind of obviously high anxiety around um, awaiting the next steps of your care or perhaps waiting for test results. But I found that for patients with dementia, this was um, exacerbated, this sense of disconnect in, in particular in terms of kind of lack of understanding about the environment that they were in. So, um, you know, sometimes not not um, necessarily understanding that it was a hospital um, or understanding why um, why they were there, you know, not knowing the familiar faces. And as we all know, um, you know, shifts change um staff are obviously caring for a lot of patients within the ward and so you might not be seeing the same person every time and and so for, for individuals with dementia that that sense of disconnect can be heightened but what I found was that through um, the live music um, being played on the ward through the musicians 
you know, tapping into their emotional intelligence, having conversations um, with the patients, um, they they could help with this kind of um, almost a reorientation um, to the environment. So sometimes helping is a, a distraction. So um, my supervisor, Tia Zanora, talks a lot about um, refurnishing and removal. So, uh, you know, refurnishing the environment, perhaps music could be used as a distraction um, for, you know, bringing, bringing the um, individual patient into the present moment, into the, the hospital space, but also providing a, a distraction um, in terms of, you know, giving you some, something else to think about um, Often you see communication would be improved. So giving you something else to talk about too. And that's something I'll come on to um, in just a moment in my second point. Um, and so you'd see this kind of a, a bit more of a connection um, within the environment that they were in because music was making it a more pleasant environment. In terms of removal, as Denora talks about, um, she talks about music kind of being a, a tool for removing yourself you know, figuratively to somewhere that's more conducive for your own well-being. So that's where using familiar music, tapping into meaningful memories can help this sense of, of removal, you know, potentially removing you to a place that's where you felt happier, where your your well-being felt better supported. Um, and then that obviously then has a knock-on effect, especially in terms of my research looking at agitation. Um, by feeling connected with, with the environment, you can then um, potentially help to support a reduction in agitation too. So the second point about musical connectedness was providing a sense of connection between um, the individual and, and the other social actors around them. So what I found was that um, patients would often, um, you know, even if they'd been in the ward for a few days, they um, might not talk to one another. And I'm sure you found this as well, if you've ever been a, a patient in hospital. Um, there's that kind of initial bit where unless you make conversation right in the, the first moments, it then can sometimes be quite hard to strike up a conversation, um, you know, particularly uh, for patients if they've got um, curtains pulled around their bed, you wouldn't think to make a conversation. Um, and what I found was that through having the live music on the ward and having musicians that not only performed, but actually used music as a tool for discussion, often um, patients would then strike up a conversation. They would talk about different memories that they had associated with the pieces of music. Um, and uh, potentially um, they might talk about, uh, you know, local music venues or um, dance halls that they used to go to. And, you know, it's quite high, highly likely that other patients in that bay um, may have also gone to, um, to those venues, possibly at a similar time. And there's that kind of you find a mutual connection, but that mutual connection was found through the music. And that's something that's really interesting um, is that the kind of thinking of the music as, as a tool for this this connection, um, which then continued long after the music had finished. Um, the the other element of, of connecting with others was um, that I often saw a deeper connection and potentially a deeper understanding of one another in terms of patients and staff as well. Um, so if patient, if the staff were able to to be in the bay during the performance, they'd um, take part in this shared experience, um, and that's something that's really important to note as well. Is is this idea of um, you know the the music creating a shared experience, and through that, if you had discussions and you know like we were saying about bringing back uh, memories potentially that had been long lost, forgotten. Um, that then could help the staff to have a deeper understanding of the individual that they cared for. And that understanding then continued um, again long after the music had, had finished. So what I'd find is that the, the direct benefits of music seem to be short lived in terms of increase of communication, increase of memory recall. That seemed to be more sort of in the moment while the music was happening. But the, the paramusical um, elements which again is a, a really um, interesting term to, to delve deeper into, um, they continued. So the things that happened outside of the arena of the music, 
So in terms of, like I was saying, a deeper understanding of, of the individual patient um, and that kind of deeper connection with one another, that was something that continued. So I'd often see, um, you know, staff would, would tell one another about what they'd seen in, in the music session. They tell family and visitors too. And so then that could keep that kind of um, feeling of the music alive for longer because then they would go back to that patient and say, you know, I, oh, I heard you had this music session. I heard that um, you were talking about uh, the time that you went to this dance hall or you know this this piece brought back a particular memory and that then that conversation can carry on after the music's finished so the third and final point that i'd like to cover around musical connectedness and what i saw um was the the idea that um that music could help to form a reconnection um with ourselves and you know this is something for all of us too and i think all of the points that i've spoken about while i'm talking in a dementia specific context Actually, we can see how we can apply this in different elements of our life, which I'll, I'll come on to um, briefly in just a moment. So that final point about, um, you know, the individual reconnecting with themselves. I think often we find that um, when individuals are diagnosed with dementia, there's, you know, you have the diagnosis. And um, it's really important not to lose sight of the fact that you are not your diagnosis. So your diagnosis doesn't doesn't define who you are as an individual and likewise for carers you know the diagnosis of dementia doesn't define who you are either and often what I'd see is through using meaningful music so the the musicians using their emotional intelligence to to understand what might be meaningful to the patient and you know a lot of the time there's a, a bit of detective work maybe in in the beginning stages but as that relationship grows you then start to understand what's meaningful and especially if you um intertwine with the care and you know get get the carers get visitors get every, everyone on board with this so that um you can all be be joining in with um you know understanding what's meaningful for the individual but by using that meaningful music um you can help to support a um an increase in feeling of of self identity of connecting with yourself you know re reminding yourself that that you're an individual that you're a person that matters that you do have you know fantastic memories and and you know a really colorful life history so music can be can often be a tool for that sense of reconnecting with ourselves so they're the, the three points of musical connectedness um, that I've um, understood um, from my own experience. But I'd really love to know your experience, too, of, um, you know, seeing um, firsthand the experiences of um, music in dementia care. Any research that you've read around the topic, um, it'd be great to, to share ideas around this. But also, even if you're not familiar with the dementia context, Actually, at this moment in time, in terms of COVID-19, you know, we're in a, a disconnected society, you could potentially say, at the moment. Um, how are you still able to um, to connect with other people and to reconnect with yourself, too? Um, my thing at the moment is going out for a drive in the car. I find that that gives me the space, even though it's often not very long, it gives me the space to to listen to music that's familiar, um, to, to kind of reconnect with myself and just um, reset, I think, is a really important um thing to be doing at the moment but how how are you connecting with um with your family with co-workers um you know through music i'd love to know um how it's working but also in, in a wider scale too um i know that, that a lot of organizations are setting up um you know virtual choirs um but are you are there any other um, elements that you're that you're finding is working for connecting with co-workers and things that you might want to continue you know out of covid19 too um things that you found have been really working in terms of connecting through music so yeah i'd love to um to open up this conversation to share with one another share our experiences um as i said kind of never stop learning um let's keep let's keep this conversation going and i'll see you over in the next video